one of my favorite country music stars is Aaron Tippin. He put out a song maybe about 10 years ago called, You Got to Stand for Something or You'll Fall for Anything. How well do you know the stories of Jesus? Or how well do you know Jesus? That's my question for you today. Wednesday night's class, those of you that attended, we had a lively discussion about a recent show that's on uh, the Discovery Channel called The Resurrection Tomb Mystery. Those of you that missed it, you can watch if you want, but I think I feel dumber since I've watched this show. But watch it to test me. But if you're going to watch it to test me, then I also want you to sit down and read the New Testament. Because if you fall, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. The TV show is there to make money to sell stuff, right? That's why they charge a million dollars for every commercial while Madonna sang at the Super Bowl for every minute, okay? So, the thought about this was is that they found the ostuary. This is an ostuary. An ostuary is basically a box that is carved of stone. It'll have the name on the end. This happens to be one of the most famous ostuaries ever. There's a man that's only mentioned nine times, nine times in the Bible, and his name is Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the high priest. This is the high priest's ostuary. And what happens in Jewish tradition is the body dies, they put it on a bench, just as we read about last week in the Easter Sunday. They put the body on the bench wrapped in a cloth. This cloth is a very thick, thick cloth. Those of you that saw or ever had a chance of witnessing the Shroud of Turin, that was the cloth that was wrapping around Jesus' body, what would happen is, after a year, the flesh and everything would decompose. Kids, this is cootie stuff, sorry. It would de decompose, and all that would be left would be the bones. And a year after the person died, you would gather up this cloth, and you would put it in an ostuary. The ostuary, the tombs look like this, like a hand. And what you would do is there would be a bench over here, You'd come in through here, put the body on the bench after a year, you'd put him in an ossuary, and you'd put him in a certain place in one of these fingers that are carved into the stone. You could put in a really good tomb, you could put a family of 40 in there after many years because they would stack the ossuaries, they'd put them sideways, and you'd have them over here. So this would be all the children of, let's say, Aaron, this would be all the children of Joshua, this would be all the children of Stephen, you know, and, and you'd, you'd put the whole family in there. So, the Discovery Channel, this, 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 this Simcha Yakovich, he is an Eastern European Jew. He doesn't believe in Jesus. Okay? To get the fact that he doesn't believe in Jesus. And he wants to tell you that he found the ossuary of Jesus Christ. Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? I want to watch that. I'm going to hit TiVo so I can record it. That's what your mind is saying. I want to hear where they say that Jesus Christ's body, his bones, are in an ossuary. Now that sounds neat, doesn't it? What's the problem if they found an ossuary with Jesus Christ's bones in it. Would you still be here next Sunday if there was physical proof that his bones were in an ossuary? I wouldn't be. I'd be off in Jamaica or somewhere else relaxing on my military pension. Our story is about the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the one doctor that they had in there, I don't know what school he got his doctorate from, but, you know, as, as I told you a few weeks ago in a sermon, it's apparent you can get up to a doctorate from any school without even driver's license. We had a man that was hiding from the law and was able to do this. But he said that in first century Judaism and Christianity, 
the thought of resurrection was different than we believe today. Really? You're going to stand for something or you're going to fall for anything. Weren't our Gospels written in first century? Weren't Paul's letters written in the first century? They all state very cleanly, Jesus Christ raised from the dead, bodily resurrection, the tomb was empty. Now every one of the apostles, except for John, was martyred. If this was a hoax, listen, let's tell everybody that his body raised up, but really at midnight we're going to go take his body and bury it somewhere else. That's the hoax we'll say. We're going to put it in an ossuary. We'll hide it. Nobody will ever find it. In the year 2011, it'll be underneath an apartment complex in the middle of Jerusalem. Nobody will ever find it. Okay, this sounds good. So they all went to be martyred? To die? For a hoax? Really? really? Come on. We can keep secrets, can't we, amongst ourselves? If I say anything in this church, you know it gets around about what? 30 seconds with email. Nobody can keep a secret for that long. And these, these martyrs would do it? These saints would do it? That we really hit his body? He didn't raise up? Come on, really? Think about it. It's so important that when you watch these shows, when the, the world tempts you, however it is, you need to know the story of Jesus Christ. Now they claimed in the show they found Mary Magdalene, they found the, the, the son of Jesus Christ, his ossuary. Remember that Jesus' name in Aramaic or in Hebrew, is Joshua. Well, Joshua is a very famous name. <coughs> in his time, you were known either one of two ways. Joseph, the son of Joseph, or Jesus of Nazareth, he was called. Can this be the son of Joseph, the carpenter from Nazareth? I mean, he didn't have, like, Bill Hess, you know, which is basically, if we look at it, our surnames came from basically what our parents did or where we came from. For some of us that are immigrants in the United States, my name came probably because some guy couldn't pronounce the last name. He said, well, where are you from in Germany? Well, we're from Hess. Okay, you're a Hess now. I mean, you, you know names got changed like that. So how can we say then that this tomb had Jesus Christ in it? Well, th what they did is they actually dug into another tomb that was Joseph of Arimathea, as they, they said, to prove <clears throat> that Jesus would be there. Again, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. Know the story of Jesus Christ. That tomb was empty. If it wasn't be empty, I would not be here, and nor would I expect any of you. We could change this place into a community center tomorrow. Because if there's no resurrection, what are you here for? Is it a country club without carts and without a, you know, clubs? Is it just because we're nice to each other? I can go to the rec center for that. I can go, remember, to a bar I can hang out at would be nice to each other. We come here because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, and that's what we believe. That's what we believe. That his tomb was empty. That when Thomas stuck his finger in, it wasn't a ghost. It wasn't a thought. It wasn't a hallucination. They were all high on heroin. They weren't all just, oh, wow, that's cool, man. No. That was the risen Lord Jesus Christ. That morning, that evening, whatever time of day it was. And they stuck their finger in his boo-boos. They felt flesh. Not an hallucination. God is a God of promises. In his Old Testament, he said, this is how I'm going to do it. And Jesus Christ came and he followed the T. I'll do this and then I'll do this and then I'll do this. And he's going to get everything done to prove that he is the one that God had said, I'm going to put him on this earth for one reason and one reason only, to die and rise again. 
so that it's proof to my people that death doesn't have dominion over you. When you die, it is not game over. Start from scratch. That's what is so important. So if you believe that the tomb may have been the tomb of Jesus, that's okay. So did Thomas. But that should be reinforcement for you to start digging more and more and reading scripture to understand the importance of an empty tomb. Because if it wasn't empty, this is a joke what we're doing here. I've met the risen Lord. It was an empty tomb. These people on this TV show are trying to get you to watch their show and buy their products. They don't believe in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And that's unfortunate. And I look forward to the day, and I hope I'm on that same boat when we're there together. And I stand there as this one professor is there before the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, okay, you misled how many millions of people on TV that my son was not dead and raised from the dead. And I'm going to sit there going, I believe and maybe I'll get that express line privilege and it'll bypass all my other sins. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.